Hello, we're at the uh, All Energy Conference in Melbourne, and um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Chris Thompson from Amber. Pleasure, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, it's thousands and thousands and thousands so of people. Many. I know. But look, you've actually managed to stand, stand out from the crowd. There's been lots of very earnest discussions, but you've actually made a really interesting announcement um, today. Mm. This is the warrant, battery warranty from BYD for your vehicle to grid trial. It strikes me as being pretty significant because no car makers have come up. Well, they've been very shy at actually giving any sort of warranties on their batteries. I'm not too sure why, but tell us about the significance of that. Yeah, so we're really excited um, to be able to, today to be able to announce that BYD are going to warrant um, our tr cars to participate in the vehicle grid trial. Um, uh, big milestone, obviously BYD, I think the second largest EV manufacturer now in Australia. Yeah, they uh, are. They, they're overtaking Tesla on some occasions. But yeah. Um, yes. So, um, uh, huge milestone. Um, we do actually have quite a few others who are in pretty serious conversations with. Nothing we can announce just yet. Um, but so they're coming around, are they? So the car makers are finally, because that's been one of the big barriers, hasn't it? The yeah. car makers saying, yeah. I mean, in reality, my understanding is, is that if you just floor your EV on the accelerator, you're probably going to use it and, and, and sort of disrupt the battery as much as you're going to using it to power your fridge. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> much more than your fridge, I hope. Um, uh, that depends how you drive, I guess. Yes. But, um, yeah, it certainly, you know, at this point, there's been years and years of studies done across various trials um, uh, around the world. Um, everything seems to suggest that actually even the car bat um, battery may even benefit by actually being lightly cycled under a V2G sort of type so, so, protocol. Yeah. Um, uh, but at the very least, it's, you know, it's having a very minor impact at, at, at worst. Um, obviously, I think for the, the OEMs and, and so on, you know, it's been a bit of a chicken and egg situation as we need to get the charges out there and get the regulations yes. and play like Amber to help optimize and, and actually design it. Um, and so the OEMs are now really starting to come to the table um, with those sort of warranty. Okay. Um, there, they're still obviously doing their own studies and, and checking, but you know, more and more we're seeing and, and hearing the conversations that they're quite keen to, to support this. And so you're starting with 50 BYD vehicles. Yep. You tend to expand that trial or yeah, are you just going to kind of launch just into full commercial operations? What's, what's the plan? I mean, I think we, uh, whether it's a trial or whether it's full commercial operations, but we're, we're wearing pretty healthful leather from here. Okay. Um, so we, uh, we, we just want to get as many devices and, and cars automated as we can over the next 12 months. Um, and, and you've got 4,000 people queued up. We got yeah, I don't almost. Know. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> I haven't even checked the latest numbers, but it's it's always one of our popular topics. Basically, every time uh, someone says anything about vehicle to grid, we get a whole bunch of Amber customers emailing and calling and being like, "Is this available yet?" Yeah. Um, so we're pretty excited that uh, as of now we can say yes. Uh, still early days, but yes. Because there's a bit of speculation around as to whether the big battery rebate, which has been phenomenally successful, and you guys have done very well out of that too, we'll get to that soon, but the fact that so many people are getting household batteries, maybe that might sort of soften demand for vehicle to grid. Are you sensing that or are you thinking? We're not seeing it, we're not seeing it yet. Yeah. Um, obviously, it'll be interesting to see how that, how that plays out. I think um, if you'd asked me six months ago, I would have said vehicle to grid may come and eat battery lunches. Uh, yes. But uh, batteries have gone pretty damn gangbusters the last, yes. <laughs> the last few months. Um, uh, and so are really accelerating. I think obviously, yeah, you know, there'll be different um, opportunities for different people. A lot of people, I think, are still going to look at you know that hundred kilowatt hours they're getting in an EV. I'm actually about to get one myself, a um, hundred kilowatt hours there, and be like, mm, I reckon I could use some of that to uh, power my own home and and you know even back up my existing battery if I've got one and, okay. and make sort of a, a decision. So having so, one doesn't necessarily preclude the other. Yeah, I think a lot of the time, and we're seeing some of the um, manufacturers also start to do a bundle yes. there where they're selling a, a solar system plus a battery plus a, a vehicle to grid capable charger. Right. Um, they're, they're together, and so I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen more and more. Yeah. And so what's in it for the EV drivers or the homeowner who's got an electric car yeah. in a vehicle to grid. I mean, you guys, you guys yeah. have got to come up with some studies, you know, people can make $300 a night with the right conditions. They can make maybe two and a half thousand or three thousand dollars over the year. I mean, how how nerdy do people have to be to do that? And, and, and is, it re you know, yeah. is it reasonably simple? Yeah, well, I mean, I think even even for Amber, a lot of people are going to be buying these for vehicle to home uses. Yes. What they want to be able to do with it, you know, um, power their own home from their EV. They're looking at their, they're like, I can I can easily spare 20% of this capacity to get myself through the night um, uh, there and avoid having to pay your high grid prices. Um, then someone like Amber comes along and says, actually, we can do even better than that. Um, we can actually unlock you know, an additional two to $3,000 a year um, from a typical EV setup. And we're seeing this already on our very sort of early um, yeah. ones there, where we are having those customers who are making $300 in an afternoon during yeah. a price spike um, and are actually you know, quite consistently making money and, and you're know, offsetting their own home usage and actually feeding back out into the grid and making extra cash yeah. there. And you don't really have to do anything, right? Like, and this is, this is our job, okay. make it as simple and easy for you as possible so that you can just come in, plug your car in when you get home and the optimization will take care of it. The car's there, ready to charge you know, as much as you need it for the next day and for your you know, normal day-to-day -day driving. 
You got okay. the ability to override it, top it all the way up for that weekend getaway. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, the opportunity to make a bit of extra money. Uh, um, but I guess the, the big fear is being caught short and halfway through roasting your dinner and going, oh, yeah. I've run out of power. Yeah. And the power's expensive. <laughs> 100%. And, and this is going to be the, the proof point is, can we actually build a product that where that you know, alleviates that anxiety, right? Yes. Um, uh, can we make sure that we get it all right? I mean, I think this is, you know, what we see with this is, is really, you know, you have to build with a customer in mind and go through those everyday scenarios and not assume everything's going to be perfect. Yeah. Just assume that sometimes people will forget to plug it in. Sometimes people will forget to, um, you know, change the configuration, let people know what's going on, give them the transparency and make it so that they are in control and they're not going to get caught out. Right. And tell us about the battery rebate scheme. It's been phenomenally successful. 100,000 batteries have gone out the door already in four months and it's probably 105,000 by now. There's talk that you guys have picked up an awful lot of these customers. Uh, we certainly we certainly do seem to be. We were uh, we were pretty bullish in June, uh, and this has wildly outperformed even our expectations. Really? Um, uh, there. Um, obviously, we don't have the exact numbers, and there's a little bit of a lag on this, but we yes. think we're tracking towards about one in five customers. One in five battery rebate people are coming on towards are coming to, uh, Okay. Um, and what's uh, that done to your total customer base then? Must uh, have. We're growing very quickly. We are, I think we'll pass 60,000 customers today. Right. Um, uh, or tomorrow. So, um, it's so effectively, if you've gone 60 and you've added 20, you've grown by 50% in yeah, just a few it's, months. It's pretty, pretty. <laughs> It's been all. You're not becoming a small retailer anymore. We are not. Um, no. uh, then, I mean, I think obviously, you know, um, yeah, we're looking to just automate as many devices as we can and help unlock as much of this value for customers as possible. Does that make your business model easier when you've got the bulk, you've got that many people playing? So, I mean, maybe it's risky because you haven't got just one or two people just doing random things. You've got, you know, things kind of even out. Or, or does it make it more difficult? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously, you know, for us, we've you know, been building the Amber for battery product now for five plus years um, uh, there. Um, it's now a really robust and resilient product. Mm. But as you grow this quickly and as you add more you know, different types of batteries, you're always finding new edge cases and new things there. Yeah. And so that's where we spend a lot of our time at the moment yeah. is trying to make sure that we can, you know, whatever device someone has, it can be a real bring your own device model that they'll be able to come on board, it'll work. You know, there's a lot of very complicated solar and battery setups uh, there. Yeah. And it's going to get more complicated once you've got the EVs. But how do we just make it that actually simple, delightful and work for, for people uh, day after day? Take me to 2030. What does amber and what does the grid look like? And what do people's homes look like? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think from people's homes, it's, it's you know, just an expanded version where we are today, right? Like yep. I think we're already at 4 million people with rooftop solar. I think you can pretty confidently assume at this point that a large, very large share, maybe even all and, and more of those will end up with a battery. Um, a lot of them will have an EV. Um, a lot of them will have a vehicle to grid compatible charger. Um, many, many people, I think, will be you know, essentially grid independent or only as dependent as they want to be. Um, and I think for us as a business, we're just seeing that as an opportunity and saying, well, hang on, why can't we turn households into the backbone of the grid where they're actually making money collectively there? We can have the CNI um, part of the grid actually paying, paying in there and, and the everyday household is you're providing that flexibility, providing the resources, providing that energy into the grid when it needs it and actually getting paid really, really well for doing it. Sounds like a really interesting time to be in the business. It's uh, the most exciting I've ever, I've, I've ever been in it. So. Absolutely. Well, it turns out to be just as exciting and just as satisfying for the consumers who've seen technologies come and go and until this point, they haven't kind of been able to grasp it and say, that's really good for me. Yeah. But now we seem to be on that point. Yeah, and I think it's just classic adoption curve. So many of the people um, and customers that are joining us now, they've had friends on Amber for a couple of years, the early adopters, the people in their, their friendship or family group are, who are the keen beans yeah. there. And they're now saying, well, hang on, this person's made $2,000 a year from their batteries the last three, four years. I should probably get on board now. <laughs> like, there, and, and I think that will just keep happening more and more. Yeah. Chris, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure.